so uh, thank you sims for giving me this opportunity to speak about immunohistochemistry very essential tool in new era of cancer diagnosis and management so coming to surgical pathology techniques these are the techniques which we generally do on surgical pathology the first two method that is hematoxylin stain and histochemical stain they are in uh, use since ages and they are the most basic techniques but still the gold standard in all the surgical pathology diagnosis means whether it is benign infective inflammatory etiologies we generally use this two stain and we can finish our 70 to 80 percentage of work but when it comes to cancer diagnosis we need other techniques also we we need to take help of these things some ancillary studies like <coughs> these all uh, you can go through it but the immunohistochemistry is the most important why because immunohistochemistry is the one okay, which has revolutionized so fast in last 20 to 25 years okay, it has changed the management of the cancer drastically means now your cancer oncophysicians will uh, will not happy with you if you will say only lymphoma they will ask you which lymphoma whether it is b cell t cell if you say b cell which b cell lymphoma you have to say dlb cell diffuse large b cell lymphoma he is still not happy he will ask you whether it is double hit or triple hit so the diagnosis in so depth now and the management is changed on the basis of the precise subtyping of the cancer so immunohistochemistry is the uh, very important tool in the current management so what is the principle the principle is in three word of the immunohistochemistry it is immune histo and chemistry so immune means antigen antibody complex histo means on the tissue and chemistry means we'll add some more chemicals to make it visualize on the slide so what is my goal my goal is i want to demonstrate a particular antigen on the tissue this particular antigen i will pour a highly specific antibody for that particular antigen if that particular antigen is there on tissue there will be a antigen antibody complex later on i will add a chromogen substrate some chemicals if there is a antigen antibody complex that chromogen will attach with that complex and it will be give some color and that will i will visualize on the light microscopy but if there is a no any antigen antibody complex that specific antigen is not there there will be a no complex and there will be a no color change so these are the some lengthy steps in the immunohistochemistry uh, i will not go in the technical aspect in detail but in general it took 6 to 7 hours for one process so the immunohistochemistry generally we can perform once a day if i want to put my second panel we have to go on the second day on the basis of my first panel results so why why the ihc is gaining so much popularity even though we have some other ancillary studies because if surgeon does not know whether i will ask for ihc in the future I means he will get okay, some simple diagnosis but later on on the he i will say no sir i need ihc for the definite diagnosis no need to worry because the ihc is performed purely on the formalin based paraffin embedded tissue section only like if you want to go for pcr and some rna studies fish study you need some rna preserving solution you need dna preserving solution some strict tube are coming for electron microscopy you have to take sample in glutaraldehyde but there is a for ihc there is a no need for any high five preserving or fixative solutions the other advantage is very which is very important you can store the stain slides for a long period of time so if later on you want to compare your morphology with he you can easily compare it with the stain slides it's not like some blood investigation or some uh, positive negative uh, uh, results so that you have to repeat the test no need just review the or already stain slides with your morphological uh, he he slides and they are remarkably sensitive and specific i will say it's not 100% sensitive and specific but they are remarkably very good sensitive they also work some of the markers are works on necrotic material also uh now the future is coming like immunohistochemistry it is immunocytochemistry so if there is a no biopsy material but we have fnsc slides or we have a body fluid on those slides also we can do the immunocytochemistry 
and some of the ancillary diagnostic techniques like electron microscopy which is we are using in the past like for mesothelioma diagnosis ma malignant mesothelioma some of the cns tumor we have to do electron microscopy but now that obsolete now we are just with the help of ihc we can do the this all diagnosis and if i will consider about diagnostic part not the management part ihc plus morphological findings from the he strain slides no other ancillary studies give the more input from uh, other than these two method combined okay this is the most important thing pre analytic factors the interval between surgical removal and the fixation into formulae it's also known as a cold ischemia time once you have taken the true cut biopsy or in the surgical removal of excision biopsy you have to put your specimen within one hour into the formalin solution so whenever you finish your surgery don't put the specimen inside your uh, ot for longer time just ask them to send it to uh, histopathology lab if you don't have a, generally according to jci rule we are not giving formalin into the ot so you have to send immediately to the uh, uh, histo histo lab type and fixation uh, uh, type and length of fixation type is it is purely 10% neutral borfil uh, neutral buffered formalin solution and the length of the fixation is 6 to 72 hours generally small biopsies like true cut and punch biopsy the 6 hours is enough but for resection specimen generally 48 hours we are keeping into the fixation but if the solution uh, if the specimen is coming from some remote place and it is it take uh, reference laboratory it take uh, to reach the reference laboratory around more than 72 hours then it may affect the antigenicity of the tissue okay in case of outside blocks compare with original reports we have many of time the uh, ravi sends us the slide and block sir ye bahar process hua hai lekin do it ihc in that case please compare the block number with the hp number of the outside hp report sometime we get the slides and block of different numbers and uh, we process the tissue sometime and it uh, unnecessary the loss of days and a uh, material in case of revision or completion surgery submit previous excision block so if patient has done the excision outside in some remote place now patient has come to our hospital for revision or completion surgery and we need they have given the diagnosis of brown cell tumor or ihc or something and you need ihc for the definite diagnosis you have to submit the original excision slide block we can't uh, do the ihc on just peripherally viable or margin positive some residual tumor we need a slide block of the previous excision tumor now the most important thing special attention to body fluid samples please 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 submit entire fluid to pathology department don't just give 20 or 50 ml of fluid and rest of the fluid just throw away we generally in case of the uh, hemorrhagic fluid or in case of the any mass lesion aseptic fluid pleural fluid we have to move cell cell block and cell block is only and only possible if we have a good amount of uh, material preferably around uh, 500 ml and around uh, so there is a no need to throw the material we will throw it if we will not use it but send it completely whatever you remove send it five bottles 10 bottles whatever we need all the materials it is like in the bottle we keep it in the overnight sediment and with the viscosity of the tumor cell it will automatically or uh, selfly they will accumulate at the bottom of the uh, bottom of the uh, that particular container we remove the superundant and from that bottom we centrifuge the smear this way we can get the highest amount of cellularity and we can make highest amount of or more number of blocks which we can use it for ihc for molecular study and all this so i my request to all the medical officers for radiology department and i request clinician also to guide them to send all the materials for the processing okay so the epitome of the location epitome means the antigen site it is not like uh, in the tissue we can diagnose the uh, positive or negative anywhere the antigen may be on membrane it could be on nucleus or it could be on cytoplasm 
so the pathologist should be aware ke particular antibody will show positivity where so for example for her to new i have to look into the membrane only if it's showing the nuclear positivity then i have to consider it as a negative or background staining like that some other markers so role of the ihc diagnostic prognostic and theranostic some more other than cancer like infection or infection identification of organism and uh, infection also in transplant pathology but will not go into that detail so the diagnosis of the tumor in case of undifferentiated neoplasm on hc stain we cannot say whether it is this uh, further categorization metastatic carcinoma bone liver pleura primary versus metastatic and uh, all the lymphomas soft tissue neoplasm like we just we can just say soft tissue sarcoma like spindle cell sarcoma malignant down cell tumor but we need we have to do ihc for the classification of this all lymphoma soft tissue malignant tumors germ cell tumor recent classification of the cns tumor is also now on the basis of ihc but these all each category required individual lecture so this is a undifferentiated neoplasm you can there is a no any glandular or any carcinoma differentiation there is a no any spindle cell morphology there is a no any melanin pigmentation so in such cases we have to do the ihc for uh, to confirm the biological lineage of the uh, tumor in that there is a generally we put in first panel carcinoma lymphoma sarcoma melanoma this is the first panel like ck lca vimentin and sn red on those result we put our secondary panel if ck is come positive we go for other uh, epithelial uh, tumors like squamous glandular urothelial these are the markers if we uh, neuroendocrine we thought on the morphologically we, because it has a different uh, chemotherapy we have to differentiate and the markers are this cd99 56 and all if our vimentin has come positive the muscle smooth muscle uh, now sees vascular differentiation if my sn red positive further marker of um, melanocyte and if lymphoma has come positive then these are the markers so depends on the my primary panel we put the secondary and tertiary panel for further differentiation and definite diagnosis for the metastatic of uh, unknown origin primary these are the common sites in which we are getting the metastatic adenocarcinoma on on detail imaging we don't have any primary in such a, uh, such species so there is a no primary found but i am saying it's adenocarcinoma in such cases we can the ihc may be uh, helpful the primary two investigator officers are the ck7 and ck20 markers they do all the study ck7 and ck20 positive uh, both positive both negative one positive one negative on that basis we uh, shortlist our uh, primary and on that basis we do the secondary and tertiary panel and we can minimize the our uh, we can suggest the primary location but again i will say no test is 100% sensitive and positive so you have to correlate with imaging tumor markers and all coming to progressing marker erpr hal2 in breast markers uh, as we all know erpr positive is a good prognosis hal2 positive and triple negative are bad prognosis ki 67 progression is a very good markers for the uh grading of the tumors like if ki67 progression index is high it is a um, high grade tumor low then there is a low grade tumor particularly we are using it in neuroendocrine tumor there will be a sometime we are confused whether it is uh, we are missing some micro invasion or not the micro invasion missing can change the prognosis so in that time we have to do a p63 and other uh, myoepithelial marker ihc breach of myoepithelium and entering the glands into the stroma that suggests it is a micro invasion and that will change the prognosis sometime to check for the lymphoepithelial uh, lymphovascular invasion we do the markers coming to theranostic it's a combination of diagnostic plus uh, therapeutic means some of the markers which will help the clinician ke okay, the uh, the therapeutic molecule will work properly or not so if my erpr is positive then only there is a need to give hormonal therapy like tamoxifen if my hal2 is positive then only there is a need to give herceptin and like all others so the my what is the limitation of the uh, ihc test so majority of the many of the time we get the true cut biopsy or some punch biopsy or small biopsy material out of that in the high grade tumor we have some necrotic areas so we have very small viable tumors in such cases the extended panel of ihc is very difficult sometime the clinician says us that you have to preserve the tissue because later on we want to do the egfr alt cross and other test for the further management so 
we try to make multiple blocks when we have a five to seven five to six or seven cores we try to make uh, two cores in each block and we make two or three blocks and we on one block we do ihc second block we do molecular and all but still my take home message for today message the immunohistochemistry as a single test cannot help much for diagnostic level clinical imaging and tumor marker inputs are of great help in putting useful markers in primary panel okay so there is a no need to if i am suspecting lymphoma or uh, there is a clear cut mass in the liver and i i have the afp high my morphology is poorly differentiated grade 4 uh, hepatocellular carcinoma i will not waste my markers for doing entire colonic panel and uh, other uh, ck7 ck20 and all so clinical imaging and tumor marker inputs are of great help if provided to putting in primary panel uh, yeah